Hi, I'm Jason Porter. I'd like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to discuss updates and advanced non-small cell lung cancer, as well as extensive disease small cell lung cancer. So these are my disclosures. Um, first, we'll talk about updates in single agent immune therapy approaches. Then we'll talk about immune therapy combination strategies, updates in chemo and immune therapy combinations from clinical trials, as well as extensive disease small cell lung cancer and first line therapy. So here we have evolution of the immune therapy um, in history. And we can see around 1980 that there were discoveries of antibodies. In 1914, genetic explanation for the rejection of transplanted tumors in animal models. Around 1976, BCG was used to treat bladder cancer. 1991, the FDA approved interleukin-2 for the treatment of metastatic kidney cancer. Around 2000, ipilimumab, the anti-CTLA-4, comes into its first clinical trials. Around 2011, is approved by the FDA. Also around um, early to mid 2000s, the anti-PDL1 era is marched in and we start to see uh, clinical trials with anti-PDL1, which brings us to the Keno 024 study, which is a sentinel trial in non-small cell lung cancer, um, patients with untreated disease with high PDL1 or greater than 50% and no activating alterations who are randomized in a one-to-one -one fashion to pembrolizumab versus platinum double. The um, pembrolizumab, arm was treated for 35 cycles, up to two years, and the platinum doublet um, arm was treated for four to six cycles. Pembrolizumab arm could be retreated after progression, um, after their 35 cycles with pembrolizumab, and then patients in the chemotherapy arm could be crossed over to the pembrolizumab arm. Primary um, endpoints PFS, secondary endpoint overall survival, as well as response rate and duration of response. At the um, publishing of the first analysis, the response rate was 44.8% versus 27.8%. The median PFS was 10.3 months versus six months. And the estimated overall survival at that time was 80% um, versus 72.4%. And that was at six months. In the update recently, we see up to five years of data um, with the 189 trial. And I'm sorry, with the 024 trial. And um, we have um, 22 0.8% versus 4.1% PFS at 36 months, and um, just over 10% out to five years um, with the uh, pembrolizumab single agents. The overall survival at five years was 31.9 months versus 16.3 months, so almost doubling the overall survival with pembrolizumab and pdl one high tumors. So the conclusion with five years of follow-up, the overall survival um, and PFS for pembrolizumab um, persist. Despite the 66% crossover rate, we still see um, a, an approximate doubling of the overall survival as this was presented by Dr. Julie Bramer recently. Patients completed 35 cycles of pembrolizumab, experienced long-term overall survival, and a second course of pembrolizumab um, was effective for these patients who had progressed. The incidence of any grade um, as well as grade three through five adverse events was lower in the pembrolizumab versus the chemotherapy arm. And Keno 024 was the first phase three study to demonstrate five-year efficacy in first-line single agent immune therapy for PDL1 high non-small cell lung cancer. Next, we have the Empower 110 trial, a similar trial to Keno 024, but it's um, with the antibody atezolizumab. These were chemotherapy naive PDL1 high patients. Um, who were stratified by sex, ECOG performance status, and PDL1 level, as well as histology in a one to one fashion to a tezolizumab versus platinum doublet. The response rate was 38.3% with the tezolizumab and 38.6% with chemotherapy. Overall survival 20.2 months versus 13.1 months, um, and the hazard ratio was 0.59 with a p value of 0.01. Similar responses were observed regardless of which um, PDL1 assay was used. Single agent immune therapy summary. So, pembrolizumab and atezolizumab are both um, able to prolong PFS and overall survival in patients with advanced metastatic non small cell lung cancer with high PDL1 expression. These agents are safe and tolerable and um, offer less adverse events compared to chemotherapy doublet um, in their phase three trials, respectively. They are both approved by the FDA for use as single agents in PDL1 selected patients without actionable alterations. 
And um, of note, since the compilation of the slide deck, Simiplamab was also recently approved for a single agent use in a similar pdl one selected patient population. Now we go to um, immune therapy combination and Dr. Ramalingam at ASCO 2020 provided the update to Checkmate 227, giving us three-year overall survival data. This is just a reminder of the um, study design, patients with stage four, um, or recurrent non-small cell lung cancer with no prior systemic therapy or known actionable mutations were eligible for the trial. The patients were stratified um, by histology, squamous versus non-squamous, divided by pdl one expression, greater than or um, less than 1%, and randomized in one-to-one -one fashion to nivolumab, ipilimumab, and chemo, or nevo in part 1a, or nevo, ipi, or nevo, chemo in part 1b. The endpoints were PFS, as we see here, um, in the TMB high population, as well as overall survival in the PDL1 greater than 1% population. The baseline patient characteristics were balanced. Um, they were predominantly male smokers, as you can see here, with non squamous histology. About one third of the patients had a PDL1 less than 1%, one third were 1 to 49%, and, greater, and one third were greater than 50%. Here we see that PFS at three years was improved with nivolumab, ipilimumab compared to chemotherapy, regardless of the pdl one level. And um, objective response rate and the median duration of response um, were significantly improved as well. At three years, 33% um, of the patients were treated, who were treated with nivolumab were alive versus 22% of patients treated with chemotherapy corresponding with a sing, um, significant improvement in overall survival. nevo ipi resulted in significantly um, improved overall survival for patients with pdl one less greater than 1% versus those with chemo alone with a hazard ratio of 0.79. And for patients with pdl one um, greater than less than 1%, the improvement in overall survival uh, for patients treated with nevo ipi was more pronounced than those treated with chemo alone and the hazard ratio was 0.64. So NEVO plus chemo did not improve overall survival in this subgroup of patients. In a post-landmark overall survival analysis in responders, patients who were responding at six months were much more likely to be alive than those um, at three years, I'm sorry, compared to those who were not responding at six months. That was 70% versus 39%, as you see here, um, regardless of the pdl one status. Also, um, the same post-landmark analysis um, showed decreased survival for patients with stable disease at six months versus responders, and even further, decrease in survival for those who had disease progression at six months. The treatment-related adverse events were as expected, and you can see here, and um, what was common and already known for immune therapy. In conclusion, the three-year overall survival um, was conserved in patients treated with nevo ipi versus chemotherapy. For patients with pdl one greater than 1%, nevo ipi was superior nevo ipi was superior to chemotherapy. And for 70% um, of patients who were um, responders at, 60, at six months, they were alive at three years. I'm sorry, 70% um, of the respondents at six months were alive at three, at three years. And um, the, at selected doses, this regimen is safe, tolerable, chemo sparing option, um, and is approved by the FDA for initial treatment of metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. So um, those are really encouraging results from Checkmate 227. Um, and that's, again, the, the combination immune therapy. And now we turn to chemotherapy plus immunotherapy. And um, Checkmate 9LA was presented at ASCO 2020 by um, Dr. Reck comparing NEVO plus IPI plus two cycles of chemotherapy um, to, to, to platinum doublet chemotherapy for first-line treatment of metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. The eligible patients were stratified by PDL1 level, sex, and histology, and they were um, randomized one to one to Nevo IPI um, with two cycles of, of chemotherapy or four cycles of platinum based chemotherapy. Um, they were treated until disease progression or unacceptable toxicity um, for two years. The primary endpoint was overall survival and PFS, objective response rate, and efficacy by PDL1 expression were secondary endpoints. Again, largely matched patient populations um, at baseline and the chemo arm did have slightly more patients with PDL1 greater than 50% and more liver and brain metastases. Median duration of therapy was 6.1 and 2.4 for the nevo ipi chemo and the chemo groups respectively, with a minimum follow-up of 12.2 months 
21% of the patients in the NEVO IPI chemo were still alive and on treatment at data cutoff. And 8% of the patients in the chemo arm were still alive. Median overall survival at the interim analysis was 14.1 months for the NEVO IPI chemo subgroup versus 10.7 months for the chemo subgroup. And the updated primary endpoint at 12.7 months, a follow-up confirmed a 34% response rate, I'm sorry, 34% reduction in death for the patients treated with NEVO IPI chemo. 12 um, months, at 12 months, 63% of the patients that were treated with NEVO IPI chemo combination were alive versus 47% of the um, patients in the chemo group. The survival benefit was preserved despite histology. So we see here non squamous versus squamous both benefiting and the PDL1 level, um, regardless of the PDL1 level that was benefit for this combination. Most of the treatment um, related adverse events were attributable to chemotherapy and they were grade one to two with the exception of some cytopenias. The immune mediated adverse events were mostly grade one and two as well and consistent with those previously observed. So in checkmate 9LA, nevo ipi and two cycles of platinum doublet um, or platinum chemotherapy improved overall survival compared to chemotherapy alone. And benefit was observed across PDL1 levels. And the regimen was recently FDA approved uh, for treatment in metastatic non small cell lung cancer. Another chemo immuno combination is the Keynote 189 regimen um, of pembrolizumab plus platinum doublet. And in the Keynote 189 study, untreated stage four patients with non squamous non small cell lung cancer were randomized in a two to one fashion to either pembrolizumab and chemotherapy doublet versus uh, placebo and chemotherapy doublet. These squamous patients were treated with uh, Taxol or docetaxel, and the um, non-squamous patients were treated with Pemetrexid. In the pembrolizumab arm, the patients um, continued on pembrolizumab plus Pemetrexid maintenance after completing their initial four cycles. And um, in the placebo arm, the patients were treated with Pemetrexid um, maintenance after completing their chemotherapy, their chemotherapy plus placebo and um, crossover was allowed for patients who progressed in the placebo arm. The primary endpoints were overall survival and progression-free survival. Secondary endpoints were objective response rate, the duration of response and safety were assessed. We can see here in the overall survival um, in the intention to treat population at 36 months, there was a 31.3% versus 17.4% overall survival in the intention to treat population. Overall survival stratified by P or um, as observed by PDL1 status, you can see that at PDL1 greater than 50%, 43.7% um, of the patients were alive at 36 months versus 28.3 in the PDL1 1 to 49 um, subgroup. And in the PDL1 less than 1, 23.3% of those patients were still alive at 36 months compared to 5.3% of patients in the um, placebo group. The PFS in the intention to treat population at 33, uh, 36 months, 11.8% of the patients um, were still progression free. And PFS by PDL1 status at 36 months, 19.9 for a PDL1 greater than 50%. Um, PDL1 1 to 49, 10.3%, and PDL1 less than 1%, 4.8%. This is overall response rate and duration of response uh, for patients with PDL1 high um, here, you see um, all patients 48.3% um, overall response rate or objective response rate. In the PDL high or greater than 50%, the objective response was 62%, 1 to 49, 50%, and for less than 133%. The duration of response by PDL one status for all patients at um, the the uh, median duration of response was 12.6 months versus 7.1. But we see in PDL1 high patients, the duration of response was 15.1% um, as expected with these patients with higher PDL1 statuses. So, in summary, with greater than three years of follow up, pembrolizumab plus pemetrexid continued to provide overall survival um, benefit as well as progression free survival benefit versus placebo and pemetrexid um, platinum in patients with previously untreated metastatic non-squamous non-small cell lung cancer. Patients who received 35 cycles of pembrolizumab had ongoing durable responses and most were alive at data cutoff. Pembrolizumab plus platinum has manageable safety profile and pembrolizumab plus platinum is a standard of care for therapy for patients with metastatic 
um, non squamous, non small cell lung cancer. Pembrolizumab and atezolizumab and semiplomab are all now approved as single agent um, anti PDL1 therapies for patients with um, PDL1 high um, non small cell lung cancer. Nivolumab and ipilimumab are approved in combination and continue to improve both progression free survival as well as overall survival with now more than three years of follow up in these patients. Pembrolizumab and a platinum doublet, as well as nivolumab and ipilimumab with an abbreviated platinum doublet, both improve survival in patients with metastatic non small cell lung cancer. The preferred approaches, these are preferred approaches in patients who have high burden of disease um, and are very symptomatic, in which you need a relatively rapid response. The bar is low. Um, with the extensive disease small cell lung cancer um, therapies, but we are jumping out of quicksand with that one. And um, atezolizumab and devalumab are both approved with platinum double and chemotherapy for patients suffering with this disease. Um, these are my references and I'd like to thank you for your attention.